Welcome back to eSig Advances Vape Apocalypse Series. Um, at Radio Shack right now, I'm going to show you how to make, or show you where to get the parts to make your electronic cigarette. So, what you're going to be needing to look for is these uh, drawers that pull out that contain, you know, parts and regulators and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Um, everything you need is going to be in these drawers. So, you know, you'll have to kind of read on the outside. They do tell you what they are. Um, the first thing you're going to kind of look for, um, your battery body. <clears throat> so your battery body is going to be down here. Well, where I live, it's going to be down here. And what you're going to need to get is the, not this one, this one just is stuck. But uh, it's going to be the two AA uh, battery body. Oh, we're gonna, oh, here they are. So the two AA battery body. Um, this is pretty much what your device is going to be made out of. Um, you're going to drill holes in this, and, you know, put your um, you know, your connection, you're going to put your horn switch, you're going to put pretty much everything you need. That's just going to be the housing. Uh, if you want to move over to switches, make sure you get the kind that is normally open. Uh, I would suggest one that looks kind of like a horn switch. Uh, if you've seen battery or box mods in the uh, past, you know what they look like. They have just a little button on there. They're relatively small. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is probably going to be on the other side. Well, at least here for me it is. Uh, your resistors. The kind of resistors we're going to get is the 470 ohm or half watt. They're about $1.19 for a package of five. And make sure we got everything. If you want to do LEDs, uh, there's an LED section. You can just open it up, pick any type of LED that you want. They have multiple colors and all that good stuff. If you want to look a little bit more fancy, um, they do have like little holders for the LEDs. So you can pick one of those, pick some of those up if you'd like. The last thing uh, that we would need to make the device would be a 510 connection. Unfortunately, they don't have those here. You'll have to either sacrifice a device or order some online. Um, multiple vendors carry them, but it's kind of one of those things you're going to have to source for yourself. Uh, if you do want to use a 901 connection, though, you can get that here. I believe it's called an M-type connection. And while you're here, um, go ahead and pick up some of the uh, solder-type phono plugs. This is what we're going to be using to make the um, atomizer out of, which I'll have in a future video. But while you're here, just go ahead and pick them up. Um, that way you don't have to come back. Yep. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vape Apocalypse eSig Advance series. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an electronic cigarette out of parts from Radio Shack. Uh, I'm using a work space. Um, I, I would assume in a Vape Apocalypse, you know, running around, possibly you'd want to be in the country, right? You don't want to be in the city where all the zombies or aliens are. So you would be out in the country, and I'm sure you would come across some country workshop style thing. Um, I'm going to bring you up close, show you the parts I got from Radio Shack. I will be using a drill press, uh, although you can use a drill, a normal hand drill, but I'm going to be using a drill press. Um, and I'll show you all the items you need. So here we go with all the items. All right, guys. So here we are up close uh, with the parts I got from Radio Shack. Uh, you can see here on the packages it does say Radio Shack. Um, there are going to be some things you can't get from Radio Shack, which is totally fine. Um, like I said, we're in a vape apocalypse or some sort of apocalypse, and I'm sure you could find some sort of uh, workshop or, or, or car auto shop or something. So, let's get on to the parts. Um, first, you need to get a 2AA battery box. Uh, I showed you in the Radio Shack video where they are located. Uh, you're also going to want to get some resistors. These are 470 ohm or half a watt carbon film resistors. They come in a five pack. They're relatively cheap. 
we have our push button. So this is going to be our firing button. Uh, it is an SPST monetary push button switch. Uh, you want it to be normally open or NO, uh, which means when you press the button, it closes the, the circuit. It's rated at three amps. So it's actually higher than some of the devices out there, believe it or not. So uh, moving on, we do have our LED, which is, I already opened it up. They have an LED drawer, so you can kind of pick out what you want. Uh, I did go ahead and put it together with one of the LED mounts. It just kind of makes it look nice in the device instead of just having an LED pop up. It, it's actually sitting in this little mount here. So it just kind of makes it look nicer. Although during a vape apocalypse, you probably don't care. Um, LEDs are optional. It's just nice to have something like that on there that kind of shows you, um, you know, that it's on or that it's working. You're also going to need some drill bits. Um, this, these here are, this is a half inch. This is going to be for, uh, I'll tell you the truth, I can't remember what it's for, but I will say what it's for whenever I use it. So we have a half inch. Um, this one here is 1130 seconds, I do believe. And then over in my drill press, I do have a quarter inch. So I, I'm not going to show you that. It's just a drill bit, but smaller. Um, so always with the plastic, you want to be careful not to uh, drill too fast. You want to, you know, do it very slow. And if possible, use a smaller bit and move your way up to larger bits. The final product is going to look something like this. Slightly different because I did get this as a kit online, but it's going to look something similar to this. Um, what else are you going to need? Oh, can't forget about the inside workings. So the insides are going to kind of look like this. Um, you're going to need to get a hot glue gun and a soldering iron with, obviously you need some solder. So here's my solder and my soldering iron is over here. So here's my soldering iron. So that's what you're going to need to make this box. Uh, it's essentially a box mod. Um, give me just a few minutes to get set up and we're going to start making it. All right, guys. So to get started, we're going to be taking a look at our double A. Um, I'm sorry, our two double A enclosed battery holder from Radio Shack. It's a very simple, just little plastic box that come with these wires on the outside. Normally people use these for various projects or something, but we're going to be turning this into the e-cig. Um, I've already unscrewed this little screw here. I'm going to go ahead and take it out and show you the insides. Now the insides, uh, where it does take a double A or two double A batteries, um, it has a spot for two double A batteries. We're not going to be using both slots because one side is going to house our uh, push button switch and our LED as well as the rest of our electronics we're going to hook up and the other side is going to be for the battery. So if you look inside here, you'll see that this back portion here is just, you know, little pieces of metal. Um, basically, we're going to pop that out. So let me get a little tool here. And take that, pop it right out. So it comes out really easy. It's just a spring connected to, you know, the other side. So simple enough, right? So what we're going to do now is pop out one of these connections down here. Um, I find that it's easier just to go ahead and get the connection without the spring and get it popped out to move it over to the other side here to create, um, you know, where the battery will sit. So let me get that out real quick. Go ahead and take the whole thing out with the wire and it's going to be a little difficult to just slide it in there because the wire is connected at the back portion of it so you do kind of have to force it in there a little bit but it's okay because it's the vape apocalypse and sometimes you just have to force things so all i did was push it down in there on one of the little slots here on the side maybe you can see that it's just a little, it's basically, it just slides down in there. Um, it's not going to be super secure. We're going to put a, a dab of super glue on there later or regular um, hot glue or what, whatever you think we should do. So just to show you how this is going to work with a battery, uh, I do have a 
14500 um, you know it's basically a double a size battery it's gonna fit right in there against one piece of the metal and the other all right so taking a look at this you see everything here on the right side is going to be where our battery is sitting on the left side all of our electronics are going to be there so we're just going to flip it over like this up top here is where we're going to put the connection on the left side because the right side is going to hold the battery so make sure you do everything on the left side say we have this back connector on here i'm just going to kind of press it on um, so this is where the battery is going to be sitting over here is where we're going to be putting everything um, so take a look and just kind of hold it how you would normally hold it maybe with a box you know you want your button probably about here and you want your LED probably up here somewhere so what I like to do is take something and just kind of scratch it in there that way you don't get confused on which side so maybe the push button up right about there LED right about there and up here this is going to be where our little connector is going to go so after we have that uh, let's go ahead and start uh, drilling into our box and getting everything ready all right guys so to get started we're going to be using uh, a clamp we're going to be installing our, or not installing rather, but drilling for our monetary push button switch. <laughs> wow, sorry. Monetary push button switch. It's a little tough to say. Um, if you look on the back of the, well, I tore it all up, but if you look on the back of the package here, um, on the back of the package, it generally tells you how big of a drill bit it will take. Um, this says half inch and that stretchy little piece of plastic right there. So our bottom portion of this, where we did our little mark right here, is going to be where we're going to do a half inch so we can fit the button in. Up top, we're going to be doing our LED. Uh, and on the back of the LED holder, it tells me how big of a part we need to drill there. So put your box mod into your clamp. Uh, don't do it too tight because it is plastic kind of set it where you want on you know where it's going to be centered before you turn it on drill down just to kind of make sure it's going to be where you marked it and you know what just to make sure i'm going to double check this because you only rated radio shack just once guys so you want to make sure you get it in the right place i'm actually probably going to do it a little bit more to the uh left on here just because I don't want to interfere where the battery is going to be. It's not going to be much, maybe a couple millimeters, but just to be safe. So put it back in there. A little tightness to it, not too much. Slide it. Yeah, that looks about right, right there. Um, I don't know if it needs to be said or not, but if you're using machinery like this, please be careful. You know, don't think they're toys. Wear protection. I actually wear glasses. I'm sure you've seen in my videos, so I'm just going to wear my glasses. But uh, be extremely careful. So here we go. All right, guys. So. Now we're back. I have the half inch uh, drill bit in there. Got it chucked, all that good stuff. Uh, let's get it, get it drilled. Go very, very slow since it's plastic. All right guys, so that was my mistake. That wasn't a half inch. Um, that was my next step up to a half inch. So uh, I do have the half inch in here now. As you change, you want to go back and make sure you are centered over where you will be drilling. Ooh, that's cutting it close. So we're gonna try it anyway, why not? Here we go. There we go. 
We definitely went through that time. So, <laughs> kind of clean your burrs off there. <laughs> Stuff gets everywhere. All right. So here, it's our little button. Boom. Look at that. Yeah. Um, since I did drill it a little closer to the wall, we're just going to have to super glue this in there. Shouldn't be a problem, but, you know, it's the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Everything has to be difficult in the zombie apocalypse. Um, so, there's the button. Give me just a second, and I'm going to get the drill bit for the LED, and we will start drilling some more. All right, so next is going to be our LED. Um, on the back of the package here, see right here, it says it fits a fourth of an inch uh, mounting holes. So here's our fourth inch drill bit. I'm going to get this in there instead of the half inch, and we are going to do the uh, quarter inch. All right, guys, got everything lined up for it. Um, with this, you're going to have to kind of eyeball it, you know, center it above uh, where, you know, you did the half inch for the, the button. Uh, this is a quarter inch again. It's a drill bit for the LED. Um, just like I said before, uh, just look on the uh, back of the package. It's going to tell you what it needs. So let's go ahead and get this one drilled, guys. Nice and smooth. There you can see I did it right above where the button will be. So I'll kind of do a you know a faux you know, kind of setting things in there uh, just to kind of show you how it's going to look. And you also want to do this every time you drill just to make sure everything's fitting correctly. And there we go. That's what it's going to look like. Um, the only thing we need to drill out now is going to be the top portion here for our 510 connector. Um, I need to get the connector ready and get the drill bit in there. And we will be ready to go after that to hook everything up with the solder. All right, guys, got my 510 connection out of my box mod. So we can show you there. Yeah, there we go, 510 connection. Uh, like I said, you should probably get a couple of these just to have on stock, or you could sacrifice one of your old devices to make a new device, one of your old broken devices. Uh, that is an 11, I think it's 30 seconds. Let me make sure, though. Yes, an 11 30 seconds drill bit is what you're going to be needing. So what I'm going to do is use the quarter inch, move up to the 11 30 seconds. That way the plastic, this is one of the weaker parts of the plastic. Um, you want it to be, obviously you don't want it to crack once you got this far. So give me just a moment, guys. We're going to go ahead and drill it. All right, here we go with the 11 30 seconds for the connection. There we go. If you do it slow and steady, you're not going to crack your plastic. And you also, like I stated before, you want to kind of step up. Um, this part has a little bit of solder left over, which is not going to fit in there. But you can see there the bottom portion. Whoop, the bottom portion is in there. So the 11.30 seconds was correct. So now that we got out of this, drilled out. Uh, we're going to start putting the pieces together and getting everything soldered. So let's move over to the bench. All right, guys. So step one was drilling our holes. Uh, I've got everything fitted now. This was the half inch. This was the quarter inch. And this was the uh, 11 sixteenths, I do believe it was. Um, something that you do need to do once you get the switch put in there bend these little posts so that they lay flat instead of straight up you won't be able to put the back portion on like that <clears throat> back portion on with them sticking straight up um, so i took out the positive little connection for the battery while i was drilling so i'm going to place that back in here all right so we have everything back into the box um, i've already taken my resistors out of the little package here um, so I'm just kind of getting everything set out so that it's ready for when I need it 
Um, I've, I've had my soldering iron on for a little while. That way it's nice and hot. There's the resistor. There's my solder. All right, so the red wire is going to be your <coughs> positive connection wire. Uh, that is going to need to go be connected right here on this side of the switch. Uh, what this is going to be doing, let me explain it a little bit. This is going to be your power source. It's going to connect to this side of the switch here. As you press the button, it's going to let the power flow through this side of the switch, which we are going to connect our LED to. And we're also going to connect it to the connector at the top. That way, once you press the button, it lets the power through, lights up the LED, and it's going to, uh, you know, put the current through your uh, atomizer. Uh, we're also going to need to do some grounds up here on the connector. Um, other than that, I mean, it's a pretty simple little deal. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth on how to solder. It's I'm not the you know the best at soldering, so don't judge me. I have a little wet paper towel here for cleaning the tip off. And that's pretty much it, guys. So let's go ahead and get started with the first connection. Uh, I'm going to make it, and then I'm going to show you close up what I did. I do want to say that you should always make a mechanical connection first. So that means wrapping the wire around where you are going to solder. Um, that way there, it ensures a good connection uh, and flow of electricity through the device. So step one is connecting our positive portion of the battery terminals to the furthest side of the uh, switch. I'm going to go ahead and tend the uh, soldering iron. any excess off. Now to solder you just want to basically heat up the joint or at least this is how I solder. So you want everything, you want your connection to be shiny. Um, if it's not shiny then try to go back and do it again. So let me take a closer look at this and make sure it's correct. Part two is a little bit trickier to explain. Uh, what we're doing is Basically, adding the resistor. The resistor is there for the LED. That way you don't blow the LED. So I'm going to use my cell phone light here to kind of, you know, so you can see. Let me get it focused. There we go. You can see on the, right here, the resistor is kind of threaded through there. Um, I've basically, well, I've done a couple steps. Uh, I took one part of the LED and kind of bent it over here towards the uh, where I'm going to be doing my grounding. The other portion of the LED is where the, <clears throat> or the other little leg rather, is where I'm going to be connecting the part of the resistor that is not wrapped around the switch. Um, it's a little trickier to show on camera and this resistor happens to be extremely large for some reason. so. That's, that's basically what I'm doing. Um, I'm just basically getting things set up to be soldered. So as you can see here, the first part is soldered. It's ready to go. Uh, let me get these things fit in here correctly and I'll get them soldered and trimmed and show you how it needs to be. All right guys, so sorry about the, the lighting issue before. I was just being a dork and had the, uh, everything turned the wrong way. So now we're a little bit closer here. I've got the uh, right amount of light to kind of show you what I'm doing. Uh, so the connection I first made was from the positive portion where the nipple is gonna be on the battery to this side of the switch. What that is doing is transferring <clears throat> all the uh, voltage the battery is putting out to this part of the switch. Now, uh, what the switch is going to do when you press the button, it is going to release that energy through here and to whatever it's connected to essentially. So, what I have done is I have connected a resistor, which is this weird bubble bee looking thing. Uh, this is part of the leg that went through the post over here. I also have a little bit of this wire that I trimmed from here. Um, 
the positive portion connection. I had some wire left over, which is nice. You don't have to buy a wire with a bo when you get a box like this. I also connected that through the same loop on this side uh, and soldered it. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this leg off down pretty close. I'm going to cut this uh, red wire here that uh, is coming from the what's, you know, the firing when it's open it's going to fire through there. I'm going to connect this wire to the inside of our connector here. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not here, but rather inside here. Basically the center pin. <coughs> Excuse me, it's cold out here. So um, the only other connections I need to make is from this red wire into this center pin. And I also need to solder the other end of the resistor to the, uh, the longer leg of the LED right here. Just want to update you on the uh, next step that I did. I kind of trimmed everything up. So I soldered the resistor to this portion here. It had a leg sticking up that I trimmed. I have the resistor now wrapped around the LED little leg, one of the LED legs. Um, I trimmed those off so that the, uh, you know, I'd be able to slide the door on and off just fine. Um, this portion here is going to be soldered to the connection here. Now my next step is to take this portion of wire, trim it, and connect it to the center piece of the uh, of our 510 connector. So here's just a little tip, guys. Uh, to connect it to the 510 connector, uh, your basically your power that's going to go to it, uh, I went ahead and trimmed the wire to where it was sticking out of the top portion just a little bit. And I'm going to connect it up here like this to the center pin. And then basically reinsert the 510 uh, connector back into the device. That way, um, I know that I have a good connection and I don't have to guess and you know use little bitty tiny tools to make it connected on the inside. So let me get that and I will show you after I get it seated. All right, guys. So I went ahead and made the connection from this little part here down into the center pin of the 510 connection. It's really hard to see inside there. I'm sure you can see a little shiny spot. Um, what I'm going to do now is connect on my grounds. So my LED ground is going to go right here and we can't forget our ground here. It's also going to run up and connect up there with the LED ground. So let me do that, get everything trimmed and we'll see if it works. All right guys, now everything is connected. Uh, I connected my black wire right there in that big goop of solder. Um, I also connected my, <clears throat> excuse me, my ground of the LED uh, right there, and there's the little leg standing up. So pretty much all I need to do is snip this little leg, and uh, we should be able to put a battery in here and see if it's going to work before we super glue everything down. So give it a quick little snip. It wasn't as close as it could have been. Sure you can see there I got a little edge standing up that's okay we'll just bend it down why not boom so there's the circuit we did um, just to go back through I'm gonna say every little step I did just for those who need a little extra help <clears throat> so I took the portion the top portion where the nipple of the battery is gonna go so actually let's just put a battery in there and test it good nothing smoking so that's good we're going to take this connector up here. It's going to run to this solder point right here. On this side of the solder point, we have a portion of wire, the red wire right there. That is going to our center pin of our 510 connection. We have a one part of the resistor, <clears throat> which is wrapped around one part of the uh, LED. The other part of the LED is connected to the ground up here of this goop of solder and we also have our ground of our battery connected to this por portion up here. So it's a really simple circuit. Um, everything is, well I don't know if it works or not so give me a second we'll find out. Alright guys so that was pretty much it. Uh, it seems like a lot of work but it's really not. Uh, the hardest part really was drilling everything correctly and I did have a little screw up. I didn't drill far enough uh, 
or I drilled a little too close um, the LED and the button up. Uh, there we go, we can kind of see. Um, so that the uh, connector's sticking out a little bit, but that's okay, we're gonna super glue everything in there. We'll see if the, uh, the voltage is going to the atomizer when it is on. Um, I just pop the back on, and this is essentially what it's gonna look like when you're finished. So uh, I hear a little crackle, I just press the button. So let's see how it vapes, you know? It's vaping great. Wow, it's a great little performer. So next step guys, I'm just gonna super glue, not super glue, but hot glue every portion in here <coughs> um, down. I'm gonna make sure the switch is nice and when I press it, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna move on me. I'm gonna make sure the LED is in there really well. And uh, then you're finished. All right, guys, so I got my hot glue gun. Um, it's been sitting, you know, warming up, so it's ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing glued in. You always want to make sure, like, your button is pressed in really, really, you know, as far as it'll go. That way it looks really nice. And really, that's it. It's, it's really not difficult to do this. So there's with all my little plastic hairs. But... Let it dry, or cool down rather, and let the plastic set up. Um, <clears throat> press on it, you know, make sure everything is where it needs to be, and there you go. You have your box mod ready um, to vape, guys. So if you have any questions, post in the comments, uh, or you can send me an email at cody at esigadvance.com, or if you would like, you're more than welcome to join our forums and ask uh call out for me on the forums. Um, our forums are www.esigadvance.com forward slash forums. And uh, stay tuned for the next one, uh, the next video in the series, which is gonna be how to build your own rebuildable atomizer. You all have a great day.